Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. One of the Muhammadan he left a message saying that how you can explain the amazing wisdom in the Quran. So I decided to share some of the amazing wisdom and the teaching of the amazing God whose name is Allah in the Quran. As you see I'm using my phone so excuse me it's not as usual but it does the job. Here we have in front of us chapter 53 the chapter sorry 33 verse number 53. And as you see, this is the Muslim translation, not my translation. Here we notice a story, supposedly. It's not a story, it's an order. The God of the heaven and the earth and the galaxies and beyond the galaxies is worried about three or four things. Let us review the wisdom of Allah. Believers, Abdus, enter not the house of the Prophet without his permission. Hmm. Allah the God of all Islam is worried about entering the house of the Prophet without permission. Okay, hold on. If somebody enter the house of the Prophet and he is a Prophet, public figure, he is a judge, he is a ruler, I mean, what will happen exactly? I mean, isn't he a Prophet? So you want to be a Prophet or you don't want to be a You want to be a private person who nobody enter your house? Hmm, okay. So Allah is worried about Muslims entering the house of the Prophet without permission. Later we will see why. And then he says, nor wait for a meal to be prepared. <laughs> you go to the house of Muhammad, you say, I am poor man. The Prophet will say to you, well, we don't have a meal. He told the wives to say, tell them we don't have food, go. And then they stay waiting because, okay, you don't have a meal now. What about later? Maybe, you know, I mean, people will eat. We don't have food now. What about two hours from now? Three hours from now? We will wait. Don't wait. And don't wait for it to be prepared because it will never happen. <laughs> and then here. Uh, Allah is a truthful. He is telling you the truth that this is hurtful, this is hurting the Prophet. What is hurting the Prophet? To enter his house and to eat sandwiches which is not made for you. And Allah is not shy to express himself and he is not ashamed of speaking the truth. What the truth? That this has hurt the Prophet, to enter his house without permission and to eat his meal. And here we need to stop. Many of you will say, well, I don't like people to go to my house without my permission, but maybe you don't understand. If we go a little bit down, you see the interpretation made by the Abdul. It says to you that the Arab tradition, they go to their houses and they enter their houses. And not only that, they eat. Actually, if you are a, a stranger and you enter an Arab man house, you stay in his house for three days, three nights, and they will not even ask you what's your name, which means your food, your accommodation is for free as a guest. It's a shame for an Arab man to ask you who are you and what do you want. Until you pass the first three days, then they will ask you. This is before Muhammad. After Muhammad, things change. Muhammad, he is an Arab, but he's different. He's cheap. He's selfish. He is crazy. He wants to be a prophet. The Arab, they used to be proud, actually, to have a guest. When somebody come to the tribe, they will be fighting over the guest who will sleep in the house of who. So if you sleep in the house of this person, you don't accept to sleep in the house of that person. That means you insulted the other one. Muhammad is different. Muhammad, he don't want anyone to come, even those who they are believers. Those are his followers. Don't enter my house without permission. And the funny, they are not ashamed even to say to you that the Arab, they used to be a lot better than Muhammad. Read carefully. This is their interpretation, not mine. The Arab before Islam, they are very open to the guests. Everybody is welcome and they are proud to serve the guest. Muhammad, a selfish man, he liked to eat your sandwich. Muhammad should be welcome anytime to any house. If you remember Muhammad, he went to his own uh, son house without permission and he entered the house and he flirted with the wife, as we saw and we explained before. And here we go to the second part of this video. You will see here Allah saying supposedly, 
if you speak and if you were to ask the wives of the Prophet something, ask them from behind the curtain that is more up for etc. So if you want to speak to Muhammad wives, you have to speak to them from behind the curtains. Otherwise, this is really hurting the Prophet. Okay, hold on. So the Arab before Islam, you can go and speak to the wives of the honor of the man. As long as you do nothing wrong, the man who will do nothing to you. I mean, what's wrong with that? But because Muhammad is a very bad, evil man, because he, when he enter a house, he think about the women in the house, he think everybody is like him. To make it simple for you, if you are a person who have a good heart, what do you think? You think everybody around you is good hearted, as simple as that decent nice thinking you never think about hurting others muhammad because he is an evil man he think everyone will enter the house of his house he would like to see speak to the wives of muhammad for a dirty purpose this is why he come with the curtain and supposedly the excuse it's allah it's not muhammad he want that it's allah you don't understand now listen muhammad he allow Muslim women to go in the street and they can speak to men and they do not need to be behind the curtain so why his wives have to be behind the curtain that's mean wives of Muhammad cannot leave the house and if they leave the house they have to make a tent around them and to be in the curtain and after that the Muslim they start using the curtain to their wives too because Muhammad first and they are second and then we see here the jealousy of Muhammad using Allah as a tool to fulfill his madness he said that is more that this is it is not lawful for you because it caused hurt to Allah messenger Allah himself saying to you if you speak to Muhammad wife not from behind the curtain you are hurting him if you speak to Muhammad wives face to face it's a big sin if you eat Muhammad sandwiches if you wait for a sandwich to be prepared that is a big sin if you enter the, 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 the house of the Prophet without permission that is a big sin and then he continues saying something more crazy and not to even marry the wives after him so not only you cannot speak to Muhammad wives unless they are behind the curtain Muhammad die and now the wives are lawful to get married any woman she is widow she can marry a new husband in all religions and actually if you ask Muslims did Muhammad marry women before before and they were widows he would say yes as an example Khadija she have two husbands before him she is 25 years older than him Yet he married her. Okay, it's question. He killed the husband of Sophia. He took her. He took many women after they were widow. Some he killed their women, said their husband. Some he took them after they became widow. So Muhammad had no problem to sleep with the women after her husband either pass away, get killed. So why it is a problem if Muhammad pass away to marry his wife? Because Muhammad is above mankind. He is a crazy man. He want to own those women even after his death. Muhammad here he was thinking, okay, tomorrow I will die. Who is going to be in the bed with my wife? Omar? Maybe Abu Bakr? Hmm. Abu Bakr he cannot marry Aisha, so he will marry whom? Maybe different women. <laughs> Who care? What about maybe Khalid? Maybe this Muslim, maybe that Muslim. So let us see how we can solve this problem. Bingo. I will make a verse saying that Allah said no one after me can marry them and by the way in that I preserve those women to death that nobody can touch them but yet I can touch every woman actually in the interpretation of the Quran uh, it says that if the Prophet his eyes fall into a woman which means he like her her husband must divorce her immediately so the prophet he can have her and here you notice how filthy this man is and this is exactly what he did with his own son he went to the wife when the husband was away he entered the house he saw the women 
wearing almost naked clothes, and he flirts with her with loud voice, and there's no way he's not aware that he can, she can hear him, and he said, Praise be to Allah, the one who made my heart a flip for you. Then the wife, she told the son, Oh, your father was he, and he flirted with me. Then the son went to Muhammad says, Hey, I don't like this woman, you take her. So look, imagine here how crazy sick this maniac. He forbid to you what he loved to do. This is the wisdom of Islam. And here the interpretation actually exposed the madness of Muhammad. That the Arab, they used to be a lot better than before Islam from the Arab after Islam. Share uh, your comment, post your comment. If you are a Muhammadan, don't forget to refute me about Muhammad forbidding people from eating his sandwich. Allah will provide him with more sandwiches. What's wrong with you? You see, Jesus, when they ask you for a sandwich, according to the Quran, chapter 5, Al-Ma'idah, this is why it's called Al-Ma'idah, which means the table, the meal. <laughs> Allah, he sends seven sandwiches. Every sandwich have a, a, have a wheel. Wheel. <laughs> seven sandwiches with seven wheels so why Allah is worried about people eating the food of Muhammad what about Allah making miracle that people they can come anytime and eat from his house and there's no problem especially the poor here you will see the stupidity of a madman trying to make himself above mankind using what he call God making himself controlling everything around him and forcing things so nobody discuss why what the wife they will say to him why we cannot marry after you no Allah he said so they cannot discuss that the, even the father of those women they cannot say okay Muhammad he die or we, they, she have the right to marry but by saying Allah said it's over this is the evil Muhammad and you heard some of his wisdom this is not the wisdom of God this is a man speaking about his own making his own fantasy, controlling people, using God for his own glory. And this glory is fatal glory. Even the dog outside agree with me. Thank you very much for listening. And by the way, I am still in a mountain area. Very beautiful. And it's very great. Thank you. And God bless you. Take care.